As we prepare for Yom Ma'ut, which we will celebrate next week, I'd like to share with you a story about how Rabbi Cook was instrumental and critical in the passing of the Balfour Declaration. As we know, in the year 1917, Chaim Weizmann, who was very highly regarded within the British community for his chemical innovations to help the British defeat the Axis forces during World War I, prevailed upon Lord Balfour, and together they worked on what became the Balfour Declaration, essentially giving the right and the license for the Jewish people to establish a national homeland in the land of Palestine. The Jews in Palestine and Zionists all across the globe celebrated the culmination of decades of involvement on behalf of the land of Palestine to secure a homeland for the Jewish people that would eventually become Israel. Nevertheless, there was opposition in England. Some members of the Jewish community opposed the Balfour Declaration on the grounds that it would ultimately call into question their own loyalty to England. They wanted to be seen as British citizens and not citizens of a different country because they were Jewish, foreshadowing a conversation which would take place for many decades to come. Others opposed it on more definitional grounds. Is Judaism a religion or is it a nation? The opposition has felt that Judaism does not give license to start a nation state in the land of Israel, but is a rallying point for creating religious communities. And therefore, they opposed the Balfour Declaration, which in essence was elevating the stature of Judaism to that of a nation. Rabbi Cook was in England during the war years and immediately following it because he was stranded in Europe as he went for an Aguda convention, made his way over to England and became the rabbi of Machsi Hadat in London. When Rabbi Cook heard about the oppositionists, he began to rally around Balfour Declaration and encouraged his followers to speak loudly on behalf and advocate for the actual passing of the Balfour Declaration in Parliament. He penned a letter which he asked that every shul should read in the weeks preceding the vote in Parliament. And in that letter he wrote, and I quote, The entire debate, whether it is our national religious heritage which sustains our life, is a mockery. There is no difference, and now I paraphrase, there is no difference between Judaism as a religion and Judaism as a nation. It is indivisible. This letter became very well known, and it really left quite an impression. In fact, when the vote came up in Parliament and it was discussed, and the oppositionists had their voice, one member of Parliament stood and said, I quote, Upon whom shall we rely on the religious aspects of this issue? Upon Lord Montagu or upon Rabbi Cook, the rabbi of Machsike Hadat? As we know, the Balfour Declaration was passed, and then it was ratified later in San Remo. A short time after the Balfour Declaration was passed, the Jewish community in Palestine were congratulating the British for their actions that they took on behalf of the young Zionist movement. Rav Cook was given the opportunity to speak, and he said the following, I have come not only to thank the British nation, but to bless it for being privileged to make this declaration. The Jewish nation, among all nations, the people of the book, a nation of prophets, is a great honor for any nation to aid it. I bless the British nation for having extended such honorable aid to the people of the Torah to return its land and assist it in renewing its homeland. Rav Cook's philosophy on religious Zionism is extensive, and perhaps for another opportunity we can discuss it. But I would like to conclude with the words of the Ramban in Parsha Bechukotai. When predicting the curses that will befall the Jewish people in the future declares that your foes will dwell upon it and the land will be desolate. The Ramban explains Translate from the art scroll, this constitutes a good tiding, proclaiming regarding all the exiles that our land will never receive our enemies as inhabitants in our place. And this too is a great proof and promise to us that we will redeem from the current exile and return to the land of Israel. The Ramban predicts centuries ago that the land of Israel would remain desolate until the Jewish people return to it as a nation. The Ramban's philosophy and his commentary on the Torah served as a basis for what religious Zionism is today, declaring that as a people, we have a religion that guides us and it informs and it translates into the way that we live as a nation. 
And as we celebrate this Yom Ma'atzma'ut, I think of a story that took place many years ago when we had a visiting we had a visiting soldier from Israel speaking to students. And he asked students, why be Zionists? Some students answered that Israel is a place of refuge. In the event that there would be persecution and Jews would suffer bias and discrimination, they would have a place to run to and resettle themselves as Jews living in the land of Israel. The students who made those remarks were not incorrect. Israel is a place of refuge, and it has always absorbed Jews from the Near East, from Europe, from the United States, from Canada, if they felt persecution and felt as if that this was a home that would keep them safe. But Zionism is much greater than a default position. Israel is the national and natural homeland of the Jewish people, giving it an opportunity to express itself authentically and organically. It is the religious homeland of the Jewish people and the national homeland of the Jewish people. Two verses say it the best. One verse is, Ki mitzion tetzei Torah, from Tzion, Torah will emanate. And the other verse is, Ate echad v'shimchai echad umi ki amcha Yisrael goy echad ba'aretz. We are one nation and we are one nation when we live in Eretz Yisrael as our national homeland. So whereas the oppositionists in Britain didn't understand the true nature of Israel, and Rav Cook stood up and advocated for its true identity. We benefit today from the earlier generations of Zionists who had the temerity and the foresight and the vision to establish a land of Israel for the Jewish people, the state of Israel, which would be the national and religious homeland that today as a result of their great dedication and self-sacrifice, we are thriving nationally and religiously. I wish you Shabbat Shalom.